Hi, I'm David Stein and Money for the Rest of Us. And today I answer the question, what is quantitative easing? Quantitative easing, or QE, is a program where central banks such as the US Federal Reserve, the Bank of Japan, and the European Central Bank purchase investment securities such as bonds, stocks, and exchange traded funds from their member banks or in the open market. In the US, the Federal Reserve bought approximately $4 trillion of US government bonds and mortgage-backed securities as part of its six-year experiment with QE. Meanwhile, Japan's central bank has been purchasing billions of dollars worth of stocks and bonds, primarily as part of its quantitative easing program. $4 trillion here, $100 billion there, those numbers sound massive, and they are, but relative to the value of capital markets, they're just a drop in a bucket. The total value of global stocks and bonds is over $225 trillion, according to the McKinsey Global Institute. The Federal Reserve's QE program was less than 2% of that amount, and even smaller when we factor in the value of global real estate and commodities. Quantitative easing is a financial placebo because its impact is less about its size and more about the stories individuals believe about it. Placebos work because we gravitate to ideas, solutions, or products that confirm what we already believe, and that's called a confirmation bias. For me, band-aids are placebos. Ever since I was a child, putting once on, put one on a scrape, I just felt better. What are some of the stories that the people tell about QE, the, the placebo that they believe about it? Well, phrases such as central banks are flooding the world with cash, or central banks have set off a global liquidity flood, sound ominous and fit nicely into the narrative of investors who believe QE is dangerous because it will lead to a large pickup in inflation and the potential collapse of the dollar and a quadrupling of the price of gold. That's just one story. Another story individuals tell about QE particularly those in favor of it, it will spur economic growth because of the large amount of reserves that banks receive as part of the program and encourages them to lend. Or there's a story that central bank bond purchases artificially push down interest rates so when the program ends, interest rates will jump. What is fascinating about quantitative easing is its impact and its effectiveness very much depends on what we believe. I like to think of QE as a giant game of musical chairs. Remember playing that as a kid? The chairs, in, in our example, are government bonds and other securities investors own, both individuals and institutions. And those chairs are their savings. An investor can always sell one of their chairs or investments to another investor and take the money and let's say book a stay at a beachfront hotel. Or that owner of that hotel could then take her earnings and save it by buying a chair. In other words, investors are always swapping chairs and the value of those chairs varies based on how badly investors want to own them. With QE, the central bank buys chairs from investors and takes them out of circulation, just like in a game of musical chairs. And if there are less government bond chairs, but the demand by investors stays the same, then the price of those bonds will rise and their yields will fall and interest rates will decline. But if investors decide they want to own a different share, not bonds, but stocks, for example, then stocks might rise and bond yields might not fall after all. Or investors might decide they want to take their chair money and buy a car. Or they might decide they want to buy a really nice car, so they go out and they borrow money from the bank to facilitate the purchase. Investors might decide they want even more stock shares, so they borrow from their brokerage using a margin loan so they can leverage up and buy more stocks. The point is no one has a clue, including central bankers, what the impact of QE would be because the world is just too complicated with so many moving pieces and shifting desires. The economy is just not a machine that could be controlled by anyone, including central bankers. QE's impact entirely depends on its placebo effect. What do individuals and institutions believe its impact will be and how do they decide to act on those beliefs. If they decide to go out and buy more stocks, then stock prices could go up as a part of QE. Or if they decide to buy more bonds, then bond yields could fall as bond prices go up. Or if they decide to take the money and go out and borrow from banks, then that could juice up the economy and the economy could, do, could grow faster. So it very much depends on what investors believe and how they act. Hey, if you like this video, go ahead and subscribe to my channel and you'll be notified next time I upload a video.